I'm back, brewing again. Claw hammer system, try number two. The first time there was things in it that I wish I had emailed them on ahead of time or talked to them about, but I didn't. I just went for it because that's what I do. I did actually cut out a bunch of stuff too that I did do wrong. I didn't show it in the video. Full transparency, there, there was something I did do I did not show in the video. There was two gallons of false bottom on it. And I thought false bottom because the, the mesh net here, this thing, there's two gallons in the space between the bottom and the, that there. I thought I had to account, account for that, so I put five gallons of water in there to get to a two gallon batch that's not needed. I talked to them, they said just mash in. If your temps are a little off in the beginning when you mash in, it, the recirculation will adjust it quickly. So I'm trying that today. I am doing only three gallons of water this time to get to a two gallon pre-boil uh, or post-boil target. My goal is to like add like 1.85, actually to be exact. The other thing I did wrong and I don't think I showed it. I was having a bunch of pump issues. What I did was I recirculated the mash. I then unhooked it, sanitized the, all the pump and everything. And then rehooked it up to then cool it down. So after I recirculate everything in the mash, keep it hooked up, but with the pump off for the one hour boil. I can keep it hooked up for that one hour while the boil is happening before I hook up, before I put the pump back on to cool off, that one hour isn't gonna do anything, especially at 200 degrees Fahrenheit when everything's running through, it's gonna sanitize it. I unhooked everything and it was a mess and I, it, wasn't, it was not worth it. So everything's staying hooked up this time. They're not gonna unhook and hook back up everything. Today I am doing a lager inspired by Brew Yard Beer Company. They, um, I've talked about them a lot in this video, uh, in my channel I should say. They are down the street from me. They make awesome lager type, type style beers. They brewed one recently that went on a silver in the LA beer competition. And uh, it was fabulous. And it's like all I've been drinking when I go over there. So I asked the head brewer owner, I was like, hey, I wanna try and replicate this. He gave me the recipe. It was 3% honey malt, the rest two row, and then he put 3% agave in the boil. And for some reason, that combo would work so well uh, he did Hollow Tower Magnum, around 30 IBUs, and that's pretty much all he did. He, and they ferment a lot with their 810 yeast, WLP 810 to be exact. I will be doing the same thing. I am not using Magnum though. I will be using um, Peco because I went to the homebrew store to get some Magnum and it didn't smell right. But I do have 810, and I do have Agave, and I did buy the Honey Malt. So everything else is pretty much exactly the same except for Peco. Uh, is this hop substitute. Let's do it. Let, let, let's do this. I think I'll get it better this time. So uh, let's do it. Let's get it going. So the initial dough in or mashing is going to be very, very, very thick for trying to do a two gallon batch if I use three gallons of water. Yeah, I'm gonna have to maybe start recirculating right away because uh, take a look. I know I'm very, very, very unique in doing small batches. I understand that. So that's not a fault of the system. It's just, it's what I do. It's how I brew. And I just don't drink a lot of beer when I'm at home. So it just goes to waste. And if I do, if I'm brewing all these, these videos all the time and doing this much beer all the time, I just won't be able to get through it. So, uh, I still get asked that question a lot of like, why do you do such small batches? That's why. For those doing 10 gallon batches, five gallon batches, this is not an issue at all. You just mash in and you recirculate and you're fine. So, um, now that I'm recirculating, I can kind of mix it in a bit better. It's still a very, 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 very thick mash of what to, you know, because the false bottom, as I said in the beginning of the video, well, the false bottom is two gallons. To me, it didn't even look like there was a gallon above the grain bed. Now that I'm recirculating, it's definitely looking definitely better. It's still very thick. We'll see what kind of yield I get. So I'm gonna add my salts as I would. Stir it in. 
adding my lactic acid as it normally would. So if I sort of let it, you know, sit, settle a little bit with the uh, recirculation happening, it might be okay. Take a look. As you saw, it's still really, 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 really thick, but uh, it is what it is for what I'm trying to do today. So let's keep the brew day going. Uh, I ran into a hiccup on my brew day. I don't know what to do about it. Let me show you the problem and uh, we'll discuss what I should do. Listen, those who know me really well know I have a couple fears. Big spider fear, big. Also big bee fear, really big one. It's irrational, I understand. That thing is terrifying. And the eggs are like ready to hatch. And it's right by all my, some of my equipment. I have to kill that thing because those eggs are, they're ready to go. And I do, want, do not want those things spreading. So now it's gonna be a battle. Me against the Black Widow. Wish me luck. She's not moving. She's not moving, which is good. Oh, she moved a little. She's very upset. All right, she moved down a little bit. She's moving slow. She's not dead though. All right, I'll report back later and see how we're doing on that. All right, let's get the brew day going now. I just pulled it up to see where I was at. It's at 1.5 gallons, way shy of what I need for, for a pre-boil. I think my pre-boil target was like 2.3 or 4 gallons. This also is soaking up a lot more than my other system was. It would only, I'd only get like maybe less than half a gallon of grain absorption. This is doing like a good gallon and a half. It did it, it, did it the last time too. I had 5 gallons, I had a 3.5 gallon pre-boil. So I thought because I had less water, maybe it would soak up less, but it seems like it's taking about a gallon and a half of my water in the, in the grain bed here. So I'm gonna let this run off again here for a second. Well, the good news is I'm at 10.53. It's going to take like 10.35. So I can handle this down, thankfully. For some reason, this just absorbs a lot more grain, at least for my old, what my old system was doing. Uh, that's fine, I'll do it down right now. All right, I'm at 10.34, it's going for uh, 10.36. I'm just shy of two gallons, I'm at like 1.9. I might just boil this for like 15 minutes, add the hops and let it steep for another like 30 or so. At this point, I have pretty much all the volume I need. So I'm very, very tempted to do just a lot of steeping batches with this. I'd say probably a good 70% of the beer I've been doing is just steeping anyway. So, or steeping the hops I should say, and then not boiling. I've had no DMS issues. I think modern modified hops, or, or malt I should say, just you won't have that issue as much. So yeah, I'm gonna play it by ear. I'm gonna see how the boil off looks maybe in about 15 minutes in and then uh, kind of go from there. All right, I have been going for about 10 minutes now in the boil, close to 15 actually, and I'm at 10.38. Um, so I bumped up a little bit. What I'm gonna do is add a little more agave. I was planning to add two ounces, which is 3%. I'm gonna go 2.5 ounces. Brew Yard Beer Company used the one from Costco, wherever agave there is. I'm doing doing this brand. I calculated the agave like I would honey. There wasn't, I didn't see an agave possible option for uh, in the beer smith program. So I just did it like honey. Looks like 10.42. Eh, I think I'm gonna call it there. I was going for 10.46. And I'm just, I don't want to sit here and boil forever and try and, and hit this target. And I'm already at like 1.8 gallons. What I'm going to do is add the hops right now. And uh, let them steep for about 30 minutes. I calculated it. That gives me about 35 IBUs. I'm going to put this back, the lid back on. Turn the pump on. And I uh, turned it down to 200 degrees Fahrenheit and hold that 200 degrees and let it do its thing. I might just crack the lid open in a fraction actually because it's still pretty hot. 
I think the only real uh, hiccup on this so far is it's been that grain absorption really got me. And it looks like I just won't be able to do a full boil on this if I want to um, potentially end with two gallons. But I still want to test that. I still like to start with maybe like 2.5 gallons and just see if I can get it down to two on a boil off. Uh, experimenting with that. But uh, like once I correct that grain absorption issue, uh, it should be it should be okay. So I'm getting down to one problem, and I eliminated some of the other stuff. I fixed some of the other stuff. So uh, the last problem to really solve is the spider, and she's curled up into a ball. And I blew on the and I blew on the web a little bit, and she didn't move. So uh, I think I think I solved that problem. That was the biggest problem for me the entire day. So it's all smooth sailing from here. sanitized this is hooked up over here with uh i've got an ice bath here ready to go i have the pump and i'm going to circulate the ice water through it back into here first i'm going to collect some excess into here and uh save that for cleaning water someone had a really really good point where they said you know we should start you know we should, it's probably a better idea to save the water and use it for cleaning and not just go to waste i gotta get better at that so that's what i'm doing with that so, all right, so another, another five minutes or so, or less, I'll uh, start, start chilling it down. All right, well, there you go. <laughs> it's gonna take probably one or two more brew days to really, really hone it in and really see where my boiler rates are, how much grain absorption there is, and a few other little factors. I will rinse this with PBW, um, hot, and I'll heat, heat up some water right now. Uh, so the cleaning process is a little longer with this system. I'll have to plan that in. So yeah, I got my 810 yeast here. Just enough for for split it up in each one of these. I've been trying to do more grain to glass videos, but until I get a bit more of a, this system dialed in, the videos are for this system, not necessarily the beer results. I will still do a tasting of these beers, the dry hop one and probably the regular one side by side. Stay tuned for that, hopefully in a couple weeks. Thank you for watching. Comment below, I'm sure you'll have a lot to say about this, suggestions and all sorts of things, which I appreciate. Go ahead and leave it down there. Um, I try to read all of them if I can. And um, the next time I got it, I know for sure I will do it without a hitch. There will be no problems on my end, 100%. See you next time.